guys. Good morning, half a day, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This public hearing conducted by the Committee on Guam U.S. Military Build Up Infrastructure Transportation hereby convened for purposes of compliance with the open government law. The initial notification to stakeholders as well as to the community was disseminated on June 9, 2017, and then the subsequent notification to the public was also disseminated on June 8, 2017. The item, we have a single item on the agenda, which is Bill Number 97-34LS, as amended by the sponsor, which is relative to an additional option for egress sizing in the International Fire Code and the International Building Code. And this is sponsored by the Senator to my immediate left, with Senator Dennis Rodriguez and co-sponsor by Senator Joe S. Augustine. I'd like to thank you, uh, Senator Rodriguez and Vice Speaker Talahi, for joining us this morning for this particular public hearing. As I've, I'm still awaiting one, partic one individual to provide testimony this morning, and as he makes his way to the hearing room, I would like to ask the sponsor of the legislation if he would like to uh, make some comments and, and provide general description of his proposal. Senator Rodriguez. Afadeng, good morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for having this hearing this morning. And Bill 97-34 um, is relative to additional, is a uh, relative to additional option for egress sizing in the International Fire Code and the International Building Code. And it amends certain sections of our current statute. Mr. Chairman, since the enactment of Public Law 33-192, it has been discovered that a lack of flexibility for the, the, for the Guam Fire Department and the Department of Public Works has occurred in the application of 2015 sections of the Guam Fire Code and the Guam Building Code as adopted in that public law. The restrictive language in Public Law 33192 does not allow the flexibility to apply the updated 2015 version of the sections of the International Fire and International Building Code specified in Public Law 33192 to construction that occurred prior to December 14, 2016. For this reason, amendments need to be made to sections 1 and 2 of Public Law 33-192. The second component, Mr. Chairman, of this measure um, is it addresses the use of um, sky lanterns in our community. Um, in, in, as you know, right now we're using 20, 2009 building codes, and had we adopted the most recent, which is 2015, uh, this um, sky lanterns would have been addressed. Um, this sky lantern poses um, a danger to, to the community, and so we want to ensure that uh, the community safety and welfare is protected by um, uh, prohibiting the use of sky lanterns, including the sale and importation of such. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Rodriguez. Now that we've heard from the sponsor of the legislation, what we do have several representatives from the Guam Fire Department who will be, or which is the agency that will be tasked with the enforcement of the provisions contained in Bill Number 97. Uh, we're still awaiting uh, one particular representative from the fire department, so we will take a two-minute recess. Two-minute recess. Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. This public hearing is reconvened after a very brief recess, and I'd like to recognize the following individuals, Darren Burrier and Firefighter Manabusan from the Guam Fire Department, who will be providing testimony on Bill Number 97. Acting Chief. Oh, good morning. Good morning, uh, Senator Logan, Senator July, Senator Rodriguez. Uh, Happy to be here and uh, providing testimony. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'd like to be submitting a, a letter of support for Bill 9734, an act to amend sections one and two of public law number 36733, relative to the additional option for egress sizing in the International Fire Code and the International Building Code, and to add a new section 20230 and 308.6 to the International Fire Code adopted on Guam. The Guam Fire Department supports Bill 9734. This bill is a proactive piece of legislation that addresses issues and concerns affecting the safety and welfare of the people of Guam and many visitors to our island. 
Additional option for egress. This provision takes a section from the updated International Fire Code of 2015. Currently, we are using the 2009 IFC. Allowing this provision in no way impacts the safety of persons attending functions at any establishment conducting businesses on Guam. As long as the building meets conditions of the fire code and are able to make use of this provision, thus allowing the businesses to hold functions at a safe capacity while enabling them to meet consumer demands, helping the economy of Guam. On the sky lanterns issue, prohibiting the sky lanterns on Guam is a proactive safety measure in protecting Guam against an obvious and documented potential fire hazard. Fire prevention primary business is just as it says, fire prevention. It is their job to identify and act proactively in eliminating uh, and preventing fires. In the case of sky lanterns, these have been a documented hazard in many states, and it would only be prudent if Guam takes steps in regulating them before a catastrophe happens. So in its entirety, the, the new bill we support completely. We think it'd be uh, a positive impact for the island. And, and in the future, I would, the only thing I would recommend is that we take a look at 2015 IFC and see about implementing more of the code into what we use as the, the code does progress through the years and they do updates on a regular basis as our fire marshal is aware and can speak on. Thank you very much, uh, Acting Chief Barrier. Uh, Senator Rodriguez, any questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Chief, sure. uh, for being here and providing the testimony and to also um, Chief uh, Manabusen. I appreciate your assistance as we um, were developing this piece of legislation and for your assistance as well in guidance and previous um, uh, efforts to improve our fire and building codes. just have a, a question. Uh, you're a member, both, uh, both of you, as the fire marshal and the chief members of the Building Code Council? Yes, sir. By law, uh, the Guam Fire Department <coughs> fire chief or his senior fire prevention officer has a designated spot on the Guam Building Code Council. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you. So my question is, uh, how often does the um, the council meet, um, and you know, is there a particular reason why we haven't uh, adopted a more recent um, fire and building code? For one reason or another, the the uh, the codes have uh, progressed, and the Guam Building Code Council has not made the recommendations for updating. The Guam Building Code Council does meet at least quarterly, or when necessary, throughout the year. So as for why we were still at 2009, uh, that is something that the, the chairman has to, of the Guam Biddy Code Council has to answer officially for the official stance of the Guam Biddy Code Council. Great, okay, thank you. Now I just, um, because if we, if we take a look at um, the, the, the concerns and issues that have been brought up, uh, we're still using 2009, and I believe every three years these are updated. And previously, we had provisions in Guam law, as I understand it, please correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, provide an automatic uh, adoption of the most recent um, codes. I believe that's not part of the provisions anymore in statute. Is that correct? Yes, sir. <coughs> Under the previous uh, Guam code annotated, uh, there used to be a section 73.112, which automatically updated the 1997 Uniform Fire Code to the next updated uh, edition. However, 1997 was the last version of the Uniform Fire Code. After 1997, the Uniform Fire Code, the Uniform, the uniform Fire Code uh, folks, they basically dissolved, and uh, part of that that function went with International Code Council. Other factions went to the National Fire Protection Association. Now, there was a plan at one time to merge all model building code organizations into one but for whatever reason, it didn't happen. So now we do have the National Fire Protection Association 1, which is the National Fire Protection uh, version of the International Fire Code. Now both versions do have prohibitions on sky lanterns, and as we discussed earlier, the current version of the International Fire Code covers the first piece of legislation that uh, is being discussed. Okay, I just wanted to, to get that on record, sir. Um, Back on the bill, um, on the Sky Lanterns on page three, um, we have language here that says, no person shall, shall release or cause to release an untethered Sky Lantern. Um, it's our intention as well that uh, whether it be tethered or untethered, that um, the, the prohibition of Sky Lanterns um, is, what, is, what the, is what the goal is. And so um, we're gonna work with the committee and, and seek the chair
chairman's approval and consideration of amending this before it's reported out to include tethered uh, sky lanterns as well. Yes, sir. That added feature, if you do make that change, would just add an additional safety factor into the law because if you do allow tethered sky lanterns, basically tethering it on like a string or whatever, if that string does break, you're still facing the same hazard as an untethered um, sky lantern. That's right, and we want to be consistent as well with the 2015 fire code, which, yes, which um, defines it as tethered and untethered. Yes, sir. And, and just for clarification, the International Code Council develops the International Fire Code, International Building Codes. These are what we call model codes. Now, jurisdictions around the United States or around the world, they can either adopt it word for word or can they, they can make modifications as needed for their unique needs. So you, you can either adopt it in its entirety, word for word, or make whatever changes. So if it's in the best interest to include the, remove the untethered piece, or the tethered piece, rather, that's just making our island more safe, sir. Thank you very much, Senator Rodriguez, for the lines of questions. I, I do have a couple of follow-on questions, and first and foremost, it would be the Guam Fire Department that will be tasked with enforcing this particular provision, correct? Correct. Now, that being the case, I know that the sponsor of the legislation, Senator Rodriguez, had mentioned about whether it's tethered or untethered, but there's a restriction here and a prohibition on page three that he alluded to that no person shall sell or import sky lan lanterns. So to me, that already is a carte blanche uh, coverage, and if you would like to further enhance the language so that it's even clearer, then, then by all means. The question I have is with regards to the enforcement. So you have a law that says, okay, this is prohibited. What are your enforcement tools, uh, penalties, fines, fees that you have that we could literally ensure the proper enforcement of this? Sir, under current Guam law, the violations for the first three uh, violations, uh, it's a civil violation. Uh, first violation is no less than $100. Second violation for the same offense is no less than 400 The third violation is low, no less than 1000 On the fourth violation, they could be charged for a misdemeanor and it will be brought to the Attorney General for prosecution. So you have sufficient penalties in place? Yes, sir. We do have a penalties. citation program in place, fully functioning and being utilized for the enforcement of all other functions of the fire culture. And when was the last time that your fees were uh, either adjusted upward? The so last time our fees were adjusted, sir, was in 1997. And they're not outdated? We have, our fee schedule is outdated. Yes, okay. sir. I know that uh, Senator Rodriguez had questioned about why is it that we don't have an automatic mechanism so that in fact the most current International Building Code or International Fire Code is automatically adopted. I, do, I recall back a few few years ago, whether it's a decade ago or about 12 years ago, if you remember, one of the provisions for the International Fire Code, the entire provision was considered for adoption by the legislative body. Mm -hmm. And some of those provisions were so restrictive that a large number of our community members came out and they said, no, we don't want that. That's a little bit too prohibitive. So if we're considering an automatic provision as a possibility to be incorporated into this legislation or in future legislation, the only thing I insist on is that any modification from the existing code, that there be a public hearing, whether it be one, two, or three public hearings conducted by the appropriate agency, not necessarily the legislature, because we adopt, uh, we should not be adjudicating. But in that particular case, if the sponsor of the legislation would like to incorporate an automatic provision, then that really should be a requirement so that the community understands exactly what is being updated, what would be the differences between the existing code that is in place, whether it's the building code or the fire code, and what would be the more current provisions that would affect the entire island community. So I, I certainly hope that you're open to that because making sure that our business community and our residents understand exactly what the deviations are and what the variances are, the differences are, is very, very important rather than just putting an automatic clause and then finding out later, oh, by the way, you have to turn the clock down. Yeah, yes, okay. sir. So. I would agree with that uh, because I believe that any time we, 
we start bringing in the new version of the fire code, we would have to have an educational process. And as the fire marshal had said, there's provisions within the fire code to adjust for our community and to make sure that our fire hazards and our safety of our person, people on Guam would be able to be met appropriately and still be able to have businesses engage in their commerce uh, without undue restriction. Thank you, Chief, for recognizing and that. And Chief, if I may add, uh, Senators, the International Coal Council has conveniently, they have a program where let's say you're gonna, you're currently using 2009 fire codes. If you were to up, upgrade to 2012 or 2015 or the new version that's coming out 2018, they actually have a comparison that will show you what are the major differences between the codes. So that you all you have to do is look right through it and you say, okay, I don't like this change, I don't like this change. And as a community, you can decide whether you agree with the changes or not. So it, it makes it so much easier, sir. Well, thank you very much for clarifying that because now it's not gonna be an arduous task of looking through volumes of building or fire codes, but it's more or less just looking at that index and saying, okay, these are the differences. So, so it will make the process that much smoother in terms of educating our community. Vice Speaker Talai. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you both, Chief, and for testifying. Um, could you just clarify, so the two codes that you referred to, one was the International Fire Code, which was adopted in 2009, I guess. And what 2010, was the, man. Oh, 2010, and what was the other one that you said when they the previous code that Guam used to use as the Guam Fire Code is the 1997 Uniform Fire Code. Okay, but then didn't Guam adopt the 2009 International Fire Code? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and now I, As you asked, the, the code that was used prior to that was the 1997 Uniform Fire Code, which is not being updated anymore. The, the organization... Right. No, 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 the two. I'm asking about the two when they split. You said there's now an International Code Council... Yes. And is it a national fire protection? Yes, ma'am. The organizations that created the Uniform Fire Code, right. some of them went with the National Fire Protection Association, Association, and some of them went with the International Code Council. So a lot of the elements that were in the Uniform Fire Code, you actually see in the 2009 International Fire Code. Okay. They, and, and just for the record, the 2009 International Fire Code is one of the most strict fire codes in the nation. Okay, great. Um, could you just explain um, the amendments regarding egress? What, what is the actual impact of this? What is, who is this going to affect? It looks like it's going now to be applicable to people it wasn't applicable to before. That was those who had built their homes prior to the date of... Okay, ma'am, just to mm -hmm. basically explain it. The language that's there is really not changing. The only piece that's being stricken from the, the current law is for all new construction. Now, the best way I can explain this is that in Chapter 10 of the International Fire Code and International Building Code that covers egress, within that particular language of that code, there's functions that include operational, construction, maintenance, and administrative. App applicability of the fire codes and building codes is included in chapter one of both codes. Now putting an app applicability clause in there, it creates that confusion. And the best example I can give you is, if you look at the Guam legislature here, the, the uh, Guam Congress building that was what they started construction here in the late 50s. In order for us to determine the occupant load of this particular assembly area, we use the 2009 International Fire Code. We don't use an outdated fire code from a long time ago. Now, within Chapter 10 of the code that we're uh, proposal to adopt, within that is occupant load factoring uh, provisions within, built in within the language that not only, only applies to new construction, it also applies to existing construction. And that's where we're having these issues. If you look at the 2012 International Fire Code and the 2015 International Fire Code, the, what we're proposing to uh, amend is actually in the current codes already. It doesn't affect the codes. All you're doing is putting all applicability provisions right back to where it belongs and it's already in chapter one of the codes. Are you saying that you already enforce these for, for older construction? Yes ma'am. What I'm trying to say is the current code that we use today, we do use it for existing buildings as well as for new construction. Okay. So this doesn't add another um, limitation on 
buildings that have been constructed? No, it doesn't, ma'am. All it actually no. does is it adds an exception. If the facility has an upgraded fire protection system and alarm system, such as sprinklers and uh, voice uh, activation where it gives you voice instructions and other features, as long as you have those features that are indicated, then it will apply to that particular establishment. It wouldn't apply, uh, uh, like Chief uh, Barrier said, blanket across everybody. You still need to meet the code requirements. All right. So, so specifically what it's doing, it doesn't cause any restrictions, but what it allows, as long as you meet all the, the conditions, as the fire marshal said, on the new type of sprinklers and activation systems, it allows a new calculation to be allowed for egress in order to calculate how many people are able to egress from that uh, egress point at that particular time. All right, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Um, the rest you've explained very well and I appreciate that. So um, thank you, I support this bill. Thank you very much, Vice, Vice Speaker Talai. Senator Regine Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you gentlemen so much for being here to testify. Um, actually, all of my questions have been answered. Senator Terlahi and um, Senator Argan have asked them and, and you've answered them well. So, um, yep, I'm, I'm definitely in support of this measure and I, I particularly like the, I know that you had come to us before and kind of discussed the lack of flexibility um, when DFD and DPW would apply the 2015 codes to construction projects prior to the December 14th date. So I'm really glad that that's being addressed in, in this bill. So again, thank you for your time and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Lee. One final, final question. I'm noticing that in section two, we're going back and we're amending the public laws rather than it being codified. If you take a look at section five, it codifies the Sky Lanterns provision. And then um, my, my question is, would it be more appropriate to have these provisions codified rather than just going back to the public law and making an amendment there so that it's actually in the Guam Fire De Department mandate to be able to carry out some of these provisions? So I'm trying to figure out why fire legislations were not codified and it makes it a lot easier for anyone who's going to be searching for some of these provisions. It, mainly it's, it's the definition, uh, the way sky lanterns are defined. And in current codes, we are able to enforce things like the fireworks importation. But uh, sky lanterns are a little bit different, but they still have flammable liquid in it with an open flame. So having an exact definition of, of the sky lantern with the open flame and flammable liquid is, is a different definition from what we currently have in our code. So addressing I, I, that this way. I think, Chief, the, the sky lanterns is not an issue because it, yeah. we're placing it in a particular section within the code. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking at are the amendments proposed in Section 2 and Section 3. We're going back to a public law and making an amendment. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's, it makes it very difficult for either agencies or even uh, researchers within the legislative body to be able to research things because we presume that everything is codified. And when in actuality, 97% of all laws are codified, but there, there are a few exceptions, and sometimes we skip over it unintentionally, and then we find out that there's already a provision right. contained in, in so the I law. So I think, I, I believe then with that, putting into the code and being able to put in provision to where we're able to adopt the new Aspire code uh, with the exceptions of what is restrictive for our society um, would be more appropriate, and then that way as it as we do get these new codes and we want to enforce them, then we can have them in the code itself. Okay, yes. Senator Bell, add to that. Um, we do have uh, examples of what you're discussing. If you look at fireworks, fireworks is actually codified on the surface under Chapter 57, but it's also included within Chapter 72, or I'm sorry, Chapter 73 underneath Guam Fire Code within the fire code itself. So you, you will find a restriction on example on fireworks on both chapter 57 and within chapter 73, subsection 73, 111 inside the fire code itself. So in essence, it, it, it's codified on the surface by adopting the model code and we're just incorporating in. But like you're mentioning, we are creating a public law for sky lanterns. So I, I guess the option would be to either codify it on the surface and the example using is the fireworks 
or just adopt it by saying that you're going to modify the model building code that we adopted into law. Okay. I appreciate your comments. And in actuality, whether we codify it, it's, it's really the responsibility of this side of the, of the bench, so to speak. It's just asking you what your preference is because whenever we have our, our members of the community, whether they be attorneys or whatever the case may be, or researchers, and they're looking for information, sometimes they glean through the Guam code annotated, they don't find anything, and then subsequently down the road they find out, by the way, this was already an existing provision. And that's only a small percentage. And that's why when we're dealing with permanent provisions or quasi-permanent provisions that affect the community, it really should be from our end on this side, uh, codified appropriately within, let's say, the fire department or the, the fire code and DPW for the building code so that, in fact, that people are able to, to find some of this information a lot quicker. But, gentlemen, thank you very much for your testimony this morning. I noticed the Director of Public Works in the audience. Are you here for the subsequent hearing? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Leonga. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Senator Rodriguez has a follow-up question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a final question. I'm going to go back to on this on this um, adopt, uh, automatic adoption of the most recent um, codes. Um, the law now uh, tasks the Building Code Council, and, and, and Mr. Director, you can please join us if, if you wish to. I know you're a member of the Building Code as well. Uh, the, the, the law is, sets that role out for the Building Code Council to be able to take a look at what the most er current um, codes are and provide the recommendations to the legislature. I'm just concerned that we haven't done that. Uh, we're, we're using 2009, we're right now in 2015, uh, whether it was 2012 and in 2015 that we've both missed and now next year we have a new codes coming up. And my concern is that we have issues like what is being addressed in this legislation and in the previous legislation when it deals with um, tiki torches, understand that um, um, furniture stores also have an issue with sprinkler systems. Um, we don't address that in the 2009 the, the most updated codes address those, and because we're, we don't, uh, we haven't adopted that, I believe we're impeding um, progress um, and development. Um, you know, we're, we are impeding that um, because we're not adopting the most recent. So, you know, one thing I'm, I keep, you know, trying to um, um, contemplate in my mind is that whether we could. Um, include that in this piece of legislation in the amended version or do a separate piece of legislation that automatically adopts the most recent codes and perhaps gives the council 120 days or so to um, from from that uh, from those adopted codes provide the legislature for ratification any changes or amendments that need to be made I just don't think that this this current arrangement where we're still stuck at an older um, code an older version of the code is, is helping us. So I just want to get maybe perhaps the director's take on that, um, if that's something that um, you can see as, as, as being viable. Thank you, Senator. Good morning, Senators. I'm sorry I'm late. Um, but to answer your question, uh, um, that you're, you're absolutely correct, and, and Senator Uggen also uh, addressed that in, in portion where um, we do as a matter of fact, uh, as we speak today, we are, we've scheduled in July to look at the difference between the current code that we are in today and uh, the 2015. And so we're, we're, we're issuing out uh, training sessions, if you will, uh, the council is in, in July 18, 19th, and I think 20th. Um, and, but having said that, you're, 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 you're absolutely right. We're still always behind, and we have to come to this body continually um, if there is a mechanism that allows us to, to update the codes, but keeping in mind Senator Uggen's uh, uh, concerns that, that there are things such as uh, uh, when we adopted the 2009 code, um, the, the, the concerns from, from the community was that the 2009 code required that every household have a, a sprinkler system, and which is you know, uh, an, an extraordinary amount of cost to, to, a, to a homeowner. Um, so, uh, and uh, you're, you're absolutely right. We need to keep um, those issues uh, in place so that so that it is adaptable, and we're 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 growing with uh, the, the technology. Um, one of the, the, the big differences between the old uh, 2009 and the two, 2015 uh, that allows for ingress egress is we're saying that that 
fire suppression and fire technology has improved so much so that, that we're that allows people to to uh, gives gives us more time to, to exit so so therefore we can we can we can uh, add more bodies into the e uh, the egress portion or the exit portions of uh, of our facilities and, and but 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 having said that we still need to if we're going to say we're going to invoke the newest uh, fire code we're still going to the newest fire code is a complement of everything uh, as uh, as as Chief Marshall said um, that that uh, uh, fire suppression. Um, um, audio alarms, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All of that got to be in play bes before we we say this is uh, um, uh, we can adopt the newer codes. So I I would fully support that. I think it would, it would make sense that if you put controls in such that the, the building code council will have to to um, um, review it, um, and before it comes into play, uh, as Senator Senator Ogan said, if you want us to go to public hearings, that I think that makes a that makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much, Senator Rodriguez. Uh, now that you're at the table, uh, Mr. Leongro, run for DPW, I have some following questions. First of all, you hit an excellent point, and that's training of personnel. <clears throat> because I would hate for we as a community to update an automatic, put in an automatic provision without you as director or your uh, successor, and without the firefighters at least having that training. Because once it's adopted, guess what, it's law. So you have a responsibility to be able to implement it. So my question to both of you, the fire chief and, and also Mr. Director, is if in fact an automatic clause is incorporated, are you able to sufficiently ensure that your people are trained so that once it becomes effective, that responsibility takes over? As for the fire department, <coughs> with our training bureau, uh, we have updated how our training process is, is happens and how it occurs where we are maintaining our pro board certifications for all of our firefighters and the National Register EMT. So with that training program already in place, we're able to primarily train all of our fire prevention officers with the new code and then after that's done, have fire prevention officers who are also fire instructors be able to re reach out to the different stations and train all the station uh, crews, all the engine companies that would go out and do spot inspections and bringing everybody up to code. So all of that is in place and it just has to be executed when we have the new codes in place. Okay. Thank you for the answer. Mr. Director. Uh, sir, can I add to the training piece? Yes. Uh, just for the record also, uh, we Guam is also part of the Pacific Regional Training Center, which is basically regional. Now, Saipan uses the 2012 version of the International Fire Code. Our instructors from Guam actually train them on how to use their newer code. So not only are we familiar with our code, we're familiar with other codes such as NFPA, which is used by the military. And by the way, we train them too, uh, the uh, 2012 version. And we're also familiar with the 2015 version. So we try to stay ahead of what the, what the industry provides so that in case that we do use it, we are very familiar with it. Thank you. For, for DPW, um, the building inspectors, the six that we have, and the optimum number would be 12 or 15, that, that really wouldn't be a problem. Um, the, the, the bigger challenge would be the training for the industry, which is the engineers, et cetera, the people that are going to have to incorporate that as they build plans for people's homes or, or commercial buildings. And then, then, then even a bigger challenge would be, as, as, as we mentioned earlier, how, do, how does it affect um, every other person um, that, that uh, uh, you know, if we're saying the building code is, is, is uh, requiring this on, on your facility or this on your home, how does that affect that? And we need to be able to translate that and communicate that to the community so, so that it's, uh, you know, it, we either have to bite the bullet because it's the right thing because it's the safest thing, or you know what? It, this is not. Uh, this is overkill, and we we probably should not uh, put put extra burden on the backs of the people of Guam. So, in, yeah. so in answer to your question, for for DPW staff, n not a problem. Um, the bigger challenge, which is the uh, building code council's challenge, is to is to to make sure that that communicates to the community at, at large. That's a that's a great perspective. I know that you mentioned that uh, you're training some of your personnel on the 
2015 code in July? Or can I just inquire generally? Because I, I, th I always try to look at things from a perspective of taking the initiative and, and looking ahead. But if 2015 code has yet to be adopted for the training of personnel on that particular provision. So, so Senator, it, what, what the, we're trying to do is to, to update our current code. Uh, um, so that training is essential. We're, we're, we're um, looking, the code uh, council, I'm, I'm obviously not the president, I'm just an ex-official, but the council is trying to adopt the 2015, that's its first step. We're gonna uh, reach out to you and, 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 and to the rest of the community once, once we get feedback on, on um, um, our training. Like, so we're thinking it takes us about six months to eight months for us to get to uh, um, the proper uh, uh, education and proper outreach, and then, then we would make the recommendation to adopt the 2015. That perspective, I want to get. So, so it's, it's a precursor to, to move for the adoption of the 2015. Code. And, and, and from that perspective, I want to commend you. Um, just one other question, because if we have an automatic clock, remember Mr. Director, you mentioned some serious concerns that were raised back in the 2010 with regards to farming and sprinklers in every single home. Now, if that only existed in the 2012, 2013 um, code, because the dilemma is high clock, we will be able to add to that. I have a lot of that in fact, this is developed some documents on MOLA because we've already decided as a community so that our new fire alarms filter that out so that our systems are more focused for residents than it is impacts to the whole soul. So are you able to filter that out and come back to the end of the automatic clause and consider that? Yeah, that's a that's a very important legislation. Um that concern doesn't change because at the end of the day if if we decide that this is really a yeah that's the thing it's a very alternate it's um uh, it's a concern because at the end of the day to, yeah, if if we decide that this is really for, for the long term it's uh, allowed uh, it's a it's it's appropriate to take the burden to keep going down to our community thing and so what I'm saying the longer term if we can try to transition not that to be again the state a lot of the the Come from the fire and this and, uh, and, and yeah, there actually is a lot of that. Uh, but but, uh, but at the end of the day, how we transition that, that if we transition that at all, um, uh, and if we perhaps we're saying you know you say 120 days, days end of the day, how we transition to the enactment transition that at all? Hearing, so we have to have a minimum of three or four or public hearings, etc. 120 days. I mean that, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks, yeah. Senator. Yeah. If, I may, um, yeah. if our community, or if we as a etc. community decide that. We want to carry forward that change that we made in the 2009 code. Um, that the particular sprinkler provision, then that's the thing that we would want to see through in the language change. So we can get in a key that and get piece. And so finally, just a little update on the provision that uh, Mr. Leon Guerrero was mentioning. The Guam Village Municipal Council is actually looking at more moving towards the 2018 code because it actually comes out next year. Uh, one of the reasons being too was the, uh, or I guess, obtaining the training materials for the 2015 code training. Uh, uh, there was some uh, difficulty in, in getting that, so the training that was originally scheduled in July, I believe, is being moved back to possibly in September. So, so I missed the last meeting, and yeah. I apologize so much. He's a more updated than I am. So just a little bit update, and and I do understand he was, you were actually off by here. And um, so uh, due to technical difficulties, the training is actually moving back a little. And by the way, this type of training would be would benefit both the fire department, the building officials, and all other industry-related uh, the people, such as the the, the local fire department, the building association, and it's going to be open up for every related as an educational people, such as the. Now there, there are some fees that are so that uh, one, but uh, it shouldn't be that so it's going to open up for everybody where the educational conference would be able to now there participate at no cost. But, uh, Thank you very much, Chief Amy, the Chief of Police, and, and Mr. Leon Burr for your testimony this morning. The committee has concluded its uh, public hearing on bill number 97-34. I would like to invite the community, if only time or a committee would really want to put a public hearing and present the public testimony that the committee will continue to receive written testimony as we will close the business on the 19th, only because we anticipate
is on Monday the 19th. Thank you very much again, gentlemen and senators. Thank you for joining us this morning. Have a good day. Monday.